Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hi, and welcome back to the Genesis podcast. Uh, This discussion is going to be Genesis chapter 14, and we're going to use extensively from the Joseph Smith translation because that adds a lot of information about Melchizedek toward the end of the chapter. Uh, Several verses will be added, and I want you to be thinking about uh, Shem and Melchizedek. Uh, Are they the same person? So we'll talk about that before we get to the end here. So chapter 14, verse 1, and it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elisar, and Chedor Laomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations. These kings ruled over cities, not kingdoms. That these kings made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Beersha, king of Gomorrah, Shanab, king of Admah, and Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Belatwalpek. There's a whole bunch of kings here, and they're all fighting against each other. I'm going to skip down a few verses here because I can't pronounce the names. Uh, Down to verse 11. They took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. So there's an invasion here into Sodom. They took Lot and his family and all of of Lot's stuff with them. Verse 13. There came one one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, the man of God, for he dwelt in the plain of of, uh, Mamre, the Amorite. Uh, brother of Eschol, the brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that Lot, his brother's son, was taken captive, remember, remember that uh, that's his nephew, he armed or led forth his trained men, and they, and they which were born in his own house, 308, and pursued, I'm sorry, 318, and pursued unto Dan. Now Dan is in the northern part of Israel. And he divided himself against them, he and his men, by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which was on the left hand or north of Damascus. And he brought back Lot, his brother's son, and all his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom also went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveh, which was the king's dale. Verse 18, and Melchizedek, which is Hebrew for king of righteousness, king of Salem, later became Jerusalem. Notice Salem, Jerusalem, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he brake bread and blessed it, and he blessed the wine, he being priest of the Most High God. So this is Melchizedek giving giving Abraham the sacrament. Uh, And so this is uh, the first time that we have a record of the sacrament being used. Not sure if the sacrament was administered very many times before this or or since before the Savior, but uh, there's at least this record of the fact that they had the sacrament. Verse 19, and he gave to Abram and he blessed him and he said, Blessed Abram, thou art a man of the Most High God, possessor or creator of heaven and earth. And blessed is the name of the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And Abram gave him tithes of all he had taken. And the king of Sodom said, Abram, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. In other words, he's made a covenant. He's made an oath. He's made a promise. And have sworn that I will not take of thee from a thread, even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldst say, I have made Abram rich, save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the man which went with me. Enter Eshgal and Mamre, let them take their portion. And then we add from the Joseph Smith translation, verse 25. And Melchizedek lifted up his voice and blessed Abram. Now Melchizedek was a man of faith who wrought righteousness, and when a child he feared God and stopped the mouths of lions and quenched the violence of fire. And thus, having been approved of God, he was ordained and high priest after the order of the covenant which God made with Enoch. Here it makes it sound like that this was the order of Enoch prior to Melchizedek, so it might have been called the priesthood of, Mel- of, of Enoch prior to being called the priesthood of Melchizedek. It being after the order of the Son of God, which order came not by man, nor the will of man, neither by father nor mother, neither by beginning of days nor end of years, but of God. 
and it was delivered unto men by the calling of his own voice, according to his own will, unto as many as believed on his name. For God, having sworn unto Enoch and unto his seed with an oath by himself, that everyone being ordained after his, this order and, and calling should have power by faith to break mountains, to divide the seas, or to dry up waters, to turn them out of their course, in other words, the power of the priesthood, to put at defiance the armies of nations, to divide the earth, to break every band, to stand in the presence of God, to do all things according to his will, according to his command, subdue principalities and powers, and this by the will of the Son of God, which was from before the foundation of the world. Elder McConkie once said in a conference talk that it may be only the power of the priesthood that will be able to stop the atomic holocausts, which surely shall be. So if you can imagine standing in your front uh, front yard, commanding the elements to part so that the nuclear attack doesn't come near you, that's what the power of the priesthood can do. Verse 32, and the men having this faith coming up unto this order of God were translated and taken up into heaven. Enoch and the people of the city were translated, but also were Melchizedek people. Verse 33, and now Melchizedek was a priest of this order. Therefore, he obtained peace in Salem and was called the Prince of Peace. There's lots of similarities here between Melchizedek and Jesus Christ. And his people wrought righteousness and obtained heaven. So it says here that Melchizedek's people were also translated. And sought for the city of Enoch, which God had before taken, separating it from the earth, having, received, having reserved it unto the latter days, or the end of the world. And hath said, and sworn with an oath, that the heavens and the earth should come together, and the sons of God should be tried so as by fire. And thus Melchizedek, having thus established righteousness, was called the king of heaven by his people, or in other words, the king of peace. And he lifted up his voice, and he blessed Abram, being the high priest, and the keeper of the storehouse of God. Remember that Melchizedek is a title, not necessarily a name. Verse 38, him whom God had appointed to receive tithes of the poor. Melchizedek was the presiding authority in the priesthood or the president of the church. Wherefore, Abram paid unto him tithes of all that he had, of all the riches which he possessed, which God had given him more than that which he had need. And it came to pass that God blessed Abram and gave unto him riches and honor and lands for an everlasting possession, according to the covenant which he had made and according to the blessing wherewith Melchizedek had blessed him. So uh, just some narrative here. The, the accepted Hebrew meaning of Melchizedek may then be taken as king of righteousness or peace. But students of language suggested that the word is a title rather than a name. A title implying a high position of spiritual leadership. Linguists dissecting the word and finding the syllable E-L in it the Hebrew for God interpret Melchizedek to mean a servant or king of the supreme God, a king priest. Paul tells the Hebrews to consider how great this man was. Through the ages, Melchizedek has been a somewhat mystical figure, but one to whom the highest respect is given. John A. Witso said that. Through the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, we find that the people who, may, who many call the Essenes desired to, more, to move away from wickedness and establish a singular community of righteousness. Their organization had a shadow of biblical organization. Their leader was called the Teacher of Righteousness, and he had two assistants. There was also a council of 12 overseers. They had an order following the righteous king, which is said in Hebrew, Melk, Melk, Melek Zedek. And that was in the Old Testament uh, study guide. Is Shem Melchizedek. In ancient Jewish traditions, Melchizedek is often thought to be Shem, the son of Noah. Melchizedek is a title meaning king of righteousness, even though it is also used as a proper name. A modern writer examined the question of whether the Shem and Melchizedek could be the same person and concluded that while we cannot say for sure, the possibility is clearly there. He said, let us examine first what we know about Shem. Although the Bible names Shem as the eldest son of Noah, modern day revelation places Japheth as the eldest. Both reports, however, are, are, are harmonious in naming Shem as the progenitor of Israel and in the fact that the priesthood descended through Shem to all the great patriarchs after Noah. In this patriarchal order of priesthood, Shem stands next to Noah. He held the keys to the priesthood and was the great high priest of his day. Living contemporary with Shem was a man known as Melchizedek, who was also known as the great high priest. The scriptures give us the details of Shem's birth and ancestry, but are silent as to his ministry and later life. Of Melchizedek, however, the opposite is true. Nothing is recorded about his birth or ancestry, even though the Book of Mormon states that he did have a father. Concerning his ministry and life, we have several interesting and important facts. All of this provokes some questions and calls for answers. Were there two high priests presiding at the same time? Why is the record silent concerning Shem's ministry? Why is nothing known concerning Melchizedek's ancestry? 
Because of this state of knowledge on our part, many saints are, and gospel scholars have wondered if these men were the same person. The truth is, we do not know the answer, but an examination of the scriptures is fascinating because it seems to indicate that these men may have been one and the same. For example, here is the case for, the one, for their oneness. The inheritance given to Shem included the land of Salem. Melchizedek appears in scripture as the king of Salem who reigns over this area. Number two. Shem, according to later revelation, reigned in righteousness, and the priesthood came through him. Melchizedek appears on the scene with a title that means king of righteousness. Three, Shem was the great high priest of his day. Abraham honored the high priest, Melchizedek, by seeking a blessing at his hands and paying him tithes. Four, Abraham stands next to Shem in the patriarchal order of the priesthood and would surely have received the priesthood from Shem. But Doctrine and Covenants 84 says that Abraham received the priesthood from Melchizedek. Number five, Jewish tradition identifies Shem as Melchizedek. Six, President Joseph F. Smith's remarkable vision names Shem among the great patriarchs, but no mention is made of Melchizedek. So that's uh, from section 138, when uh, Joseph F. Smith sees those in the celestial kingdom. Melchizedek is not mentioned, but Shem is. Uh, number seven, Times and Seasons speaks of Shem, who was Melchizedek. On the other hand, there is a case for there being two distinct personalities. Many believe that Doctrine and Covenants 84.14 is proof that there are perhaps several generations between Melchizedek and Noah. The scripture says, which Abraham received the priesthood from Shem, or I'm sorry, I'll start over, which Abraham received the priesthood from Melchizedek, who received it through the lineage of his fathers, even till Noah. If it does turn out that uh, Shem and Melchizedek are the same person, this scripture should prove no stumbling block because it could be interpreted to mean that priesthood authority commenced with Adam and came through the fathers even till Noah and then to Shem. And that was from Alma uh, Gigi or Gigi, um, and that was from an, an Ensign article back in November of 1973 uh, entitled, Is it possible that Shem and Melchizedek are the same person? Uh, my personal belief is that they are the same person. Uh, they do sound similar uh, in their and their characteristics and that we don't have the lineage of of, uh, of Melchizedek, but we have Shem's, and so I think that they're the same person. That's just my opinion, and you can make your own determination. I bear testimony of the truth of the gospel and the scriptures that we read, and bear this testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you like this podcast, let your friends know. Thanks. Bye.